Uh, this is Donna Walsh, our demo for today, and uh, I know that in the 70s she was the world's leading lady jockey, maybe the only leading uh, jockey, and uh, raced all over the world, and I'm so disappointed she didn't bring her horse today, but she said he was muddy. And, uh, but as you can see, uh, uh, animals are her forge, and uh, it'd be wonder, I, I, I do know that this is, uh, is this the original? Correct. Yeah. Oh, this is a watercolor, believe it or not. And uh, over here, it, the rest are all she clays. Except for the kitties. Oh, and the kitty Except cats an original. and original oil. Correct. And we have the kitty cats. You can see the transposition of what, what she did with a, an original uh, photograph, and then she transposed it into that delightful uh, oil painting. And then the, uh, the uh, what's the name of the cowboy on the bucking? Eight seconds. Eight Second is a gicle on canvas, and this is a gicle on paper, so you can see the, the big difference um, on the canvas. And uh, without further ado, I'll let you tell, tell us all about yourself. <laughs> and, and don't be discouraged. You, what, this is one reason we bought the television, was so that you could watch that. But uh, we're not able to do that today, but immediately afterwards we will have her on tape and then we can roll again and see a close-up. Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. We wind up the same thing. Well, hello. Good afternoon, ladies. Don't ge uh, and gentlemen. There's a gentleman back right there. Yes, I'm artist, ex-jockey, Donna Walsh. Used to be Hillman when I was riding in the 70s, yeah, and they used to yell at me, go home and do the dishes, and I'd yell back, I can't do that either. <laughs> but anyway, and during my career on the racetrack, uh, I had numerous art shows of, uh, at turf clubs, uh, various places, Australia, Jamaica, New Guinea, uh, New York, California, Florida, and my entire life has been two things, art and horses. Those are my main things, and I've done them since I was a child. I sold my first painting at the age of 14 of another girl's horse, and then I did equine art for years after that until I met another artist in California, and she got me into portraits. And I was doing oils when I met her, and she was a watercolor artist. Her name was Gay LaGuire, and she probably still lives in California a fantastic watercolor artist. And I think since then, she has switched back to oils herself. But I think as an artist, when you paint a lot, you get bored with one media and you start sort of experimenting with others. And I've come up with all kinds of different mixtures, blending, find it fun to experiment with different medias. I started mixing uh, acrylics with watercolors with gouache actually uh, the piece eight seconds the original was mixed media where this is strictly watercolor that was oil and this is all graphite or I .e. pencil and then I did the eyes in watercolor just because I thought it would be kind of unique and hopefully somebody doesn't call it uh, what do you, what's that word sort of a no, I'm at a loss for words. What you gimmick? Some people would look at it as a sort of a gimmicky thing, but what the heck? If it sells, gimmick is fine. I'll smile all the way to bed. <laughs> all right. Okay. Moving right along. What else you want me to say? I'm still painting. I'm still riding my horses. I don't ride races any longer because my bones don't like. Tell her. Tell us why you can't ride in a race anymore. Because well, I could, <laughs> except I'm a little old for that now. <laughs> but you said it takes so much strength to rein in a 1,500 oh. pound horse, and the jockeys on either side are trying to kill you and all that. Oh kind of stuff. No, no, no! Way back when in the 70s, we we were a little bit barbaric, if you will. I mean, the jocks <laughs> used to try and knock your feet out of the stirrups because there were no videos. So we get to the finish lines like ha 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 ha. <laughs> but now you're busted. Big time. The Racing Commission call you right in there and say, look what you did, honey, and you go, oops, you can't get out of it. So the jockeys today really have to watch your P's and Q's. Back then, we, 
I mean, I remember this kid, one of the first races I rode, he tried to knock my foot out of the stirrup. So I just cocked my whip and popped his horse right in the nose, and his horse stopped dead. It was like a Mack truck hit him in the face. And I was like, you're not going to touch me again, are you, honey? He was like, no. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, they can't do that anymore nowadays. Uh, and I quit the track, let's see, in 76. And I continued painting, and I went into training horses professionally. I, did a, I worked a lot with what they call rogues, which are horses that have problems rearing, bucking, running away, biting, kicking, and all that stuff. But I don't do any of that anymore. I have my own three boys that are just, I hand raised every one of them, and they're dear hearts. And I'm sorry, but I've bought enough property with this body, which means when you're on the racetrack and you get dumped, they call that buying <laughs> property. Well, a heck, I own half of Belmont Park. <laughs> no, I'm not going there, there anymore. Okay, would why you all like you to choose? Uh, why did you choose Grants Pass? Why? Uh, well, number one, because I'm still a trail rider. I wanted a piece of property that was surrounded by BLM, Bureau of Land Management, uh, so that I could ride and I like peace and quiet and serenity and I found a piece of property up there that's to die for. Actually, I, I looked all over and it took, I looked at probably 30 homes, 30 pieces of property and homes before I found this place. And I died and went to heaven. This place is awesome. So I can ride right off my property now. And I don't have to worry about traffic or, you know, any major distractions their turkeys might fly up in my face or a deer might spook my horse, but, you know, they usually let you know if something's coming anyway because their ears are telling you what's going on up ahead. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys ready for me to just start painting? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do wet on wet which is adding clear water to my surface to start with so that when I start to add pigment, it will sort of spread softly. If I was to do dry, then I'm going to end up with a stark mark and I'm dead in the water. And, and the other thing um, I think everybody needs to know if they're, the, if they're not that familiar with watercolors um, is the paper that you work on such as this paper right here, which is about as cheap as it gets. So that means you can't scrub, you can't lift, you can't manipulate without destroying the paper. This would just fall apart. And I, later, if we have time, I'll, I'll do a demo and toast a piece for you and you'll see it for yourself. Um, other papers, such as 140 pound cold press, you can scrub and get kind of aggressive with it and you're okay, but not with this. And what I do is I apply a small amount of color when I start. Now I'll do the other eye too, which, oops, I need to put clear water on there first. Um, where was I at here? What did I say last, guys? Help me out here. <laughs> I, You're going to toast one for us. Oh, I'll do that later. Oh, no, what, okay, where I was at is, what I like to do is I start out with a very light wash or glaze, either word to me, same old, same old, um, and I sort of let that dry a little bit, not very long, and then I go in with another glaze. I do, I may glaze these eyes six times a piece, seven times a piece, depending on how much pigment, how um, dark I want the color. So now I'm adding a second glaze. I start out with some kind of yellow. I didn't mark my palette. I never do. And then this is really bad. I do this too. I go like this. Mm, get a point on my brush, but you guys shouldn't do that. <laughs> Tasty paint. Okay. So now I'm going to build up this side. If you guys have any questions, I'm not too shy, so shoot, you know.
I want to add some blue as this wolf is out in the Aspen somewhere and there may be some sky peeking out, so reflection of the sky. And we'll put in his eye. What was this on the tongue? Yeah. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I've been doing it. It's not cool to do, probably, but I break all the rules. To me, there are no rules in art. I, used, I, went, I took a class somewhere and they were trying to tell me, well, you have to do this in this order and that order. <laughs> I don't buy it. I do my own thing. Live and learn. Wait. And then I'm going to darken the pupils. And I'll go back and forth. And don't be discouraged if you can't see because... Oh, I can move stuff. Well, no, when you're all through, we're going to show it on television. I know, but if they want to watch me, just sort yeah. of kind of go... So, <laughs> there's still room for you to watch it. Goop around. Goop around. Watch but thanks for moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that helps. Yeah, now you guys don't see it. That's right. Maybe. Uh -huh. My who what? Your tongue is blue. <laughs> Doesn't bother. We need a video of that. <laughs> yeah, I should have had that. Oh, you didn't have it on? Good. Oh. Oh, well. Come on. <laughs> oh, by the way, Greta? Yes. Hey, I talked to my jockey agent. Yes. And he's contacted... Uh, Belmont. Belmont is not running until next month, and but um, he will get a tape for you. We get a tape of her pounding down the home oh, stretch. Yeah. Oh. I was hoping we'd have it today. Well, no, we'll I talked it. to him. He said the reason he couldn't do that is because Belmont is not racing right now. And since I quit the track in '76, I don't keep up with it. I may watch a t Triple Crown or something, but you know, I hung up my tack. End of deal. I don't pay attention to it anymore. But anyway, he said, uh, he, he called um, Aqueduct, who's racing right now. And they said all their, their archived um, film stuff, of which I'm in, is at Belmont. And when Belmont opens in May, he'll get a tape made and ship it to me. So I'll, I'll call him up and oh. say, hey, I want one too. <laughs> so I'll, I'll mail you one. Oh, thank you so much. That'll no problem. Fantastic. Sorry I couldn't the, have it today, though. Uh, can you go to the races there in uh, Cape Junction? Um, I'm not, I mean, uh, Grand's Cabin. Yeah, I went. What a trip. <laughs> not quite the same as Belmont. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I mean, like, we can walk across the infield. They'd shoot you <laughs> if you're trying to do that at Belmont. The cards would get you in a nanosecond. They would not allow that. But it's a little bit more laid back at Grant's Pass. Kind of fun. Are any of your horses ex-racers? Oh, no. No, I don't own a thoroughbred. Not that they're not cool horses, but I have Arabians because I just happen to like the breed. I started out with quarter horses, and then I went to uh, crossbreeds, which I like as well. I like... Arabian quarter horse is a great cross. But I'd fall asleep on anything that doesn't have spirit to it. That's why I like Arabians, because they're hot. Have you seen that movie, Hidalgo? Not yet. I will, I will. I know, quarter horse beats all the Arabians. I heard about it. A Mustang. A Mustang. That's even better. <laughs> God, I can't imagine. Must be a heck of a horse. I heard the dude that, or the guy that uh, um, rode the horse in the movie, the actor, he purchased that horse, and he owns it now. Well, that horse was like 23, uh, no, no, how old was it? It was an old horse. Really? Yeah. The paint. It's a true story, yeah. Hidalgo. Oh, I know that the is. The horse was eight years old. Oh, eight? eight? That's nothing. That's prime. Prime is... Well, I thought it was older than Oh, that. no, 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 no. Prime is between eight and ten is like great if if somebody came to me and said i haven't i've never owned a horse i don't know anything about riding i'd say don't buy anything under 10. you want something that's well seasoned you don't want to go out there and play cowboy mm -hmm. yeah. you know when we say they're green riders mm -hmm. that's that's somebody who hasn't ridden much mm -hmm. well 
a green rider and a green horse equals black and blue. You don't want to go there. <laughs> it's true. Anyway. Yeah, I've got enough. I've had uh, several surgeries and whatnot. Oh, tell us about your broken bones. Can you oh. do that and see? Hey, you, you want to see some scars on film? Hey, <laughs> uh, X-rated video. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, let's see. I broke my collarbone at Belmont. Clipped heels with another horse and went down. Let's see. I had a really bad spill in Australia because this gal had no business. I don't even know how she got a jock's license. Well, she lost it after that race. She wiped out half the field. She came out of the starting gate and dropped her reins. Her horse just went, <coughs> and everybody went, <coughs> it was not fun. <laughs> so I was in pain for the next several races. Oh, you didn't stop racing? Me? <laughs> nah. I just took some very nice drugs that the doctor gave me. I kept on trucking. Yeah. When you're getting paid $500 a day, you don't quit. Well, that was, okay, that was Australia. I wasn't getting paid there. They weren't allowed to pay us, but I had a bad spill in, uh, um, where was I? Jamaica. And... They had to, oops, I made a mistake. Oh, tough. <laughs> oh, well. Make it feel good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that happens. This is watercolor. Yeah. And that's a tough thing about watercolor is it's pretty unforgiving, especially when you're using paper this cheap because I can't try and fix it without the paper falling apart on me because that's what would happen, I guarantee you. Oh, let's see. Do you use paper like this a lot? No. This, what, what I'm working on here are lithographs that I sell, right? Oh. So this is um, a hand remarked, signed, limited edition lithograph. That's what gives it the value. Other than that, these guys, one of these suckers, eh, not worth much. Ooh. Sorry, that's the way I feel about it. <laughs> but remarked, it, that adds value to it. So. This is called a soft cell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the knees are made, and then she goes in and Straight colors the knees. eyes and ends. Right. These come off a press in nanoseconds. Trust me. I, wa I oh, watch. I see, and then you just touch up eyes. And... Right. So this has been hand remarked by moi, the artist, which mm -hmm. people seem to like. <coughs> Could you get better paper? Uh, oh, that's the problem. Um, say, I'm speaking to you guys because I take it most of you guys are artists, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to know the real skinny and not some baloney that right. somebody might tell you. Um, these cost to reproduce about three cents a piece, opposed to you want to spend, you know, 30, 40 bucks a piece? I don't think so. So mm. that's why. I, besides, this was my very, very first lithograph, and I was like, I'm not going to test the market and spend big bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going for the, like, bargain basement value. Thank you very much. And it's still beautiful. When it, did you do the wool? This guy? Uh, oh, let's see. That's a good question. Um, I don't have any date on there. Do I, see, that's another smart move. Never date anything. <laughs> ah, because if you do, and say you've got a piece hanging in the gallery, you may think it's cat's meow. And you did it, and you love it, and all that good stuff. And you put, you know, whatever your name is, 2004 on there. And for some reason, it's just not happening. So you want to take it to another gallery, and it's now 2010. And they look at it and go, well, hell, this has been around a long time. That's not a good deal. Just don't put a date on it. A little tip. <laughs> I, quit I like that large thing. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it could be just hanging in your house. Yeah. Yeah. These are beautiful paintings. Are these oils or? Which, uh, now that, um, the difference between watercolor and oil, I mean, the price wise is almost the same to reproduce on watercolor paper because it's expensive watercolor paper. But then it, then again, I mean, it commands four, five, six, seven hundred dollars. 
opposed to something that you're selling for, I sell these for 135 because they've been remarked. And do you take your own photographs? Yes, I do. So you've taken this guy? Yes, but what, for reproduction purposes, I send each and every piece out to a professional who does transparencies. Uh, my publisher works from trans... Uh, what do I call it? The printer that did that, they had the original to work from. And they sent out the original to their own people who did the transparency. Therefore, that piece is true to the original, whereas the one on Giclay on um, canvas, uh, I did not send the original to my publisher. My publisher reproduced that. They did that strictly from the transparency. Now you can see a gross difference in the colorization. And that's strictly due to the fact that they didn't have the original to work from and they interpreted colors their own way. That's something you've got to be careful about. You sent you something to approve. I, really, I told them I wasn't happy with it. And if I really wanted to raise heck, I could and just say I don't accept it and then wait another six months for them to send me another one that I don't like, because I've already been through this with this publisher, and every publisher is different. So it's just one of the pitfalls of being an artist. What can I tell you? I've noticed, like, in some of these, like, uh, Milk Pond Press, yeah. the fine numbered uh, limited editions are less than the Chiclete. What, what, um, what are they reproduced on? Um, but that's true no, of you too, it, 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 Donna, yeah. isn't it? These are reproductions, and they sell for less than your sheet plates. Oh, yeah. Uh, lithiographs will always be less than a... Well, these are signed and numbered, um, what do you call it? They can still be a limit. This is a limited right. edition, mm -hmm. signed and numbered, and they'll be less because it costs me less to reproduce them. These Stri are color separations, that type. Well, it also could be that these pieces they're selling have been on the market for a long time, and they're just trying to... It's Robert Bateman. I know who he is. Yeah. He's an excellent wildlife artist. Okay. But he could have pieces out there that just didn't do any well. For some reason, one year, uh, polar bears don't do well, or this or that just doesn't do well. And the Indian market fell apart for a while. So well, the barn market's been gone for a long time. Well, so that's what they do. They they drop the prices and sell them cheap just to get rid of them. Robert Bateman, I mean, you put your name in the bucket to get his uh, originals. Oh, gosh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about Stefan Lyman, too? Yeah. yeah. I think everything sells. I don't know. Well, I, 9 11. The Jaclays are more expensive than the signed number color separation. Yep. If I want to feather something out, out once I've already had some pigment applied to my paper, I just add clear water to it and then just, um, I don't want to say mess around with my brush, play around with my brush like this, kind of dab and stuff, and it'll help the pigment flow. Now I want to put a little bit more blue in there, not quite as blue as I wanted, so I'm going to darken that up a little bit more. Is your seascape in the corner, is that oil? The original, correct, was oil. Yes. Thank you very much. That, that title of that one is Sunset Sonata. Oh. 
You'll have a ball with that wildlife place. If you take pictures, they've got two a brother and sister grizzlies. Oh, really? They have four big, fat, glossy black bears. They have cougars and all kinds of wolves and eagles and buzzards and all kinds of things. Wow. Did I tell you I used to have a real wolf? No. Yeah. Ooh. I worked uh, movie sets for a while. After I quit the track, I worked for a guy named Mo DeCesso Wildlife in Newhall, California. And we had all the rats from Ben and Willard. <laughs> and we had Arnold the pig from Green Acres. Oh. And we had an old lion who barely had any teeth. I used to have to feed him chicken and the bees would follow me. I'd have this big bucket of chicken. <laughs> I'm like, this is not fun, but it was a nice old lion. And then he got in this uh, big old timber wolf, and they crossed this timber wolf with a coyote, and she had a litter of, I think it was 10, and he gave me the pick of the litter because he liked me, and I took good care of his critters. And I did a lot of, I worked on the set of Little House on the Prairie. And got to have lunch with Michael Landon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but his wife was sitting right next to him. That sort of ruined it for me, if you know what I mean. But anyway, I got to meet him. He was a really nice guy. And then um, I got to work on the MASH set for a while. That was kind of cool. Uh, you kept the wolf? I, okay, sad story. I had him for about three years and he was very shy i mean he couldn't raise your voice because he'd wet on himself oh. yeah um he he was never aggressive or anything like that but i had to move and i didn't at the time didn't have a place where i could actually take a full-grown wolf so the neighbor who had lived in front of me was a friend of mine, and she really wanted him, so I gave him to her. And this was horse property. I had my horses then. I haven't been without a horse since the age of six. But anyhow, she took him, and she didn't have a fenced in yard like I did, so she staked him out. Oh, yeah, which was a major no-no. And what happened was he got loose. He ran across the street to one of my best girlfriend's house, attacked her old dog. Her husband came out, Red Fletcher, and blew him away with a shotgun. Oh, no. Sad story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to hear a worse one? No. Oh. <laughs> no? <laughs> well, how about it? Well, I used to have a lot of exotic pets. Before I went to work on the racetrack, I had a 12-foot boa constrictor named Sid that I got from a stripper in Hollywood. And she had this act called Najalan or Serpent. And she decided to change her act one night and said, anybody in the audience want him, raise your hand. I was like, yeah, I'll take him. So she gave him to me. He was the best bodyguard I ever had. I never had a guy lay a hand on me. I didn't want to because I just drag him out and they'd say, you're nuts, and they're out the door. <laughs> it was great. Anyway, um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, I, I had two raccoons in a... Olingo, which is related to the kinkachu, and they come from Australia, and they kind of look like monkeys, but they, unfortunately, if they get upset, they scream, and they sound exactly like a woman. Being First of all, you take a picture of your horse, <laughs> and you develop that, and then you paint from your picture, is that right? Uh, not always, no. I, I do many different things. I may see a picture in a magazine or at a friend's house, that gives me an idea, and I might, I might take 15 different pictures. Say, I see a picture in a book, I see a picture in a magazine, I see a postcard, I see a calendar picture, and I'll take those pictures and I'll manipulate them any way I see fit. That's where the sort of, uh, you know, do what you want kind of thing. And then I use a projector 90% of the time, and I'll take those pictures and I'll move them around and go, okay, I want to put, I wish I had one of those other ones here. But say these wolf guys up here, 
that I saw her in a picture, I think a calendar somewhere, and I found that pup in another picture, and I just put them together. A piece of cake, and you got a, you got a projector? It's like you gotta be brain dead not to be able to do anything with it. It's really easy, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but it is. So, um, and sometimes, okay, he's telling me to, no, no, I would. 75 different photographs to come up, pose a piece. It's because I got flowers here, palm trees there, a table here, chairs there. But you just say, stick your, your canvas, or if I'm going to do that sort of thing, I'll tack my canvas right to the wall. And I'll take my projector back and I'll stick a picture in it. And I'll move it around and go, okay, that guy looks cool over here. So I sketch him in. I don't do major sketching, but I'll do outline it. Then I'll get my next picture, but I've already sat down at my desk and sort of figured out which way I want to go. And then I'll stick them in there, sketch them, and I'm ready to paint in two hours. And if you want to do that freehand, you'd, next year, hello, you're still yeah. sketching, honey. You don't want to do that. So, saves um, a lot of time. No. Go ahead. Well, I had a lot of questions to ask. <laughs> when you do your, your oil paintings and then you have a clay made, how do you know the prices to put from, from your original oil to your giclet? Uh, well, the, basically, depending on what the giclet is costing me, I double it. I see. If, if it costs me 140 then just double right. that cost. And then you take it to the gallery, and they'll double that. Right. And that's how it usually works. Okay. Oh, do you sell to the gallery? Sometimes. Most of the ones that I take, sometimes I sell. These are easy. I sell these. I do not put them on consignment. I sell them outright to the galleries. Uh, most of these pieces, they're on consignment. So if they sell, they sell. If they don't, hey, you never know. That's all that um, has taken me on as, a, as an artist in their stable, if you will. You know, I wish it was Somerset or Hadley House, but uh, I settle for hip art. It's better than nothing. And uh, so they get my artwork. They pay for all the reproductions. I don't incur any cost whatsoever. They pay for everything. But the downside to that, I mean, there's upsides and downsides. The upside is exposure. They have my work in Anchorage, Alaska. I've had friends call me, hey, I just saw your painting of, uh, who's it was? It? She's not here. Sorry. One of these, <laughs> my paintings in an airport in Las Vegas. And I went, oh, cool. Glad to hear it. Anyway, but the downside is, money-wise, I only get 15% when they sell. But really, an artist, in order to make it and have a name, you've got to have the exposure. And the money. Yeah, and unless you can, um, you've got to market. And that's where the publisher comes in, because they have hundreds of vendors that they sent, you know, sell these pieces to. And then that gets them out there, which gets your name out there. Mm -hmm. So I may have to just, you know, so I'm not what I would call a famous artist. Yeah, I mean, some people have heard of me, but that's because I'm a big loudmouth. <laughs> <laughs> I knew today would be fun. Oh, <laughs> guaranteed. Oh, well. Now your seatscape, did you take a photo of that? Who? Your seatscape. I don't know. Take a photo of that, Sylvia. <laughs> no, I said, no, did, did you? Did you? Oh, you yeah. It? Of course. I have, uh, I didn't bring it. I have a big album of 8 by 10s of every piece, except for, I mean, honestly, I wish I had stuff I did when I was a kid. But you know, you go and you trash it. I remember I used to put big black X's through it because people used to take my artwork out of the trash can. I'd see it in somebody's house and I'd go, you got that out of the trash. And so after that, it was big black X or I tear it up. So people couldn't do that. Because I was grossed when I saw these things. I think, oh, I can't believe I was that bad. I thought it was so great. Oh. Anyway, so anyhow, that's. Any was more this questions? An oil painting? Wait, oh, that original, correct, was an oil painting. And where I got the idea for that, that and you can't ask me where that ocean seascape came from, because I don't have a clue. Ocean. Ocean? <laughs> yeah, well, no kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I went into, I take a lot of 
photographs everywhere I go. I, I can't live without a camera. But I was in, um, oh, one of those, wasn't Ernie's, what, main name for a camera store. And they, you buy cameras in there, you take your photographs, they do the one hour printing, all that stuff. It was in Texas. And they used to have this once a month photo contest. Well, I saw a picture of that up on the wall and I was like, oh, that's a painting. And they knew me in there. And I said, can I borrow that picture? I'll get it back in an hour. I took it home, <laughs> projected it, and got it right back. They put it on the wall. Nobody knew anything. <laughs> so I wonder someday if the uh, picture, uh, person who ever took that picture was, <laughs> sees that painting somewhere. That and That looks familiar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, prove it. <laughs> the ocean is everywhere, darlings. <laughs> but I can't tell you where that's from. I really don't know. I made little changes here and there, but not, it's pretty close to whoever took it, wherever it came from, I don't know. But anyway, I guess I'm unorthodox, but it works for me. Right. Yeah, any more questions? <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Oh, you've got to pick out a number. A number? Wait, wait, wait. We're not done. Nobody can leave. <laughs> Nobody gets to leave. Well, she didn't partake. Oh. She doesn't want to say. Well, okay, but <laughs> she's gonna. <laughs> All right. Who, do, where do I pick a number? You just think one of a number. number. One out of in your head. In your head. One out of who? A one out of 21. Okay. 17. Who's 17? Nobody here. Oh, what the year? Who's number 17? The ladies. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it's Lynn Parker. Oh. No, it's the gal with the brown jacket. You 17? You just won a, a print. You got to sing? Mary you got to sing. But you have to sing. <laughs> yeah. Mary has a little lamp. The whole thing. <laughs> Here we go. The whole thing. I'm not sure. Da, 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 da. Go. Go. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, Mary went, Mary went. And everywhere that Mary went, that lamb was sure to go. All right, all right. So you got no, it. Oh, oh, you oh, you go. Go. oh, 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 but you have to sing too. <laughs> Not me. I <laughs> won't we'll do it as well as she did. All right. <laughs> That's Mary yours. had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, Mary went, Mary went. Everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. <laughs> All right. The first picture on your left was an ad for Calder Racecourse, which was a new track in Florida that took place of Tropical Park, was sold and they opened Calder, so I did an ad for Calder. Your next picture with the root beer was a, a commercial for A&W root beer. And the next picture was, the black and white is hilarious time, and it was just a newspaper thing. They wanted to do something with me swimming the horse on the beach. Rhyme, rhyme. <laughs> what? Rhyme. <laughs> All right, so this black and white was a um, just promotional jockey thing. I don't know. It, it went in the L.A. Times, Miami Herald. It was all over the place. Now let me add a little teeny one. I'm holding up a quarter. And that was a Dutch Master Cigar commercial. Um, and my lines were, if I can remember, Hi, I'm Jockey Donnie Hellman. I know all about racing links, but what I didn't know about was mid-length, the new racy cigar 
from Dutch Masters. There you go. Two for a quarter, can't lose. Tell them, fellas. And then these two guys took off from there and told us stuff. Okay, next one is uh, just another, uh, some picture after some race, I don't remember where or when, um, a newspaper deal. And then the next little teeny weeny was a horse named Red Pants that I rode for Red Brick Stables and it was a stake race and I won it. And I don't know who took that picture. And it, if you want to pan straight down, that's Farrell, one of the best horses I ever owned. That's me. I trick trained him. I made commercials with him and did a lot of performances for children's shows, guest ranches, and so on and so forth. And then your picture next. I don't recall this horse's name, but it was a picture taken at Highly a racetrack, and I was just walking along. It's probably a green two-year-old because I see my irons are really long, so that means I wasn't going to breeze them. That means I was just going to gallop them, relax, and that's why my irons are so low. Okay, let's move on. This is a commercial. This next one was for Burger Chef. The lady in the sweatshirt was one of my best friends. I was back in California. That was after I retired from the track, and I did a commercial for Burger Chef on the same horse barrel that was rearing up there. That's him in that outfit. Okay, that's all I can say about that, except he tore that outfit, and it was an original from uh, the Hollywood rental in Hollywood, California. That was an original oh, antique. Yeah. yeah. He ripped it, they had to fix it. Okay, the next picture is just me um, ready to go out uh, to meet with the owners in the racing enclosure prior to being mounted up on your horse to go out to the track, and I believe that was taken at uh, Belmont Park. And the next picture over there was, um, somebody sent me that picture, I don't know who, and it was me weighing out on the scales after winning a race. And then the picture down below that one is another shot from the same Burger Chef commercial that we looked at earlier. And which way do you want to go? Where, where are you going next? Okay, down. And that, that is a goofy, definitely 70s picture of me standing in front of the house that I bought off two bets that I made on my own horse because I knew unless he fell down and broke a leg, nobody was going to catch my butt. So. <laughs> That's where that picture came from, and uh, that was a nice little house in Florida. Next picture was a picture taken of me in Jamaica. Uh, I won some big races, and the owners were going to take me out for some drinks, and somebody took that picture. I don't remember who. And the next picture is just a little one of the racing, New York Racing Association um, pass to get on the track. Mm -hmm. You had to have a license to get on the track. Uh, next picture is just a jockey promo picture taken by the racetrack photographer Jim Rafferty. And next picture in the water there, uh, which is the same horse up there. The horse's name was Hilarious Time and it went all over the newspaper saying Donna, jockey Donnie Hellman is having hilarious time in Miami Beach with hilarious time. <laughs> da, 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 da. Now this next lovely picture you're about to see. Up my, oh, up, up, okay, Australia. That was the first international women's race held in the world in Brisbane, Australia. And that is six of the jockeys. I'm in the middle. And each one of us represented their own country. Me being, I represented the United States in the first woman. Blah, blah, blah. And that was just well, a... Promo picture. Here. Now moving We're along recording. to the mud shot over here. Um, that was after a race. Uh, obviously, um, I got slaughtered in mud, and that picture went all over um, the newspaper as well. And the horse's name was faded, and they said something about jockey Donna Helm gets a free mud pack riding faded, who faded in the stretch. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, they love to work on words. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> okay, now we'll move down. That's a wind picture, taking a call to race course. I recognize that horse. Her name was Swifty Gal, and the trainer's name is Brian Webb, and he is now deceased because my jockey agent, who I still talk to, told me that. And the next picture is just that. That was... Uh, a&W root beer. Yeah, I recognize the same outfit. 
it's an a, it was an A and W root beer com commercial. Now the next picture of me, that uh, I'm trying to remember that horse's name. I remember the the trainer that's Don Levine, and his wife sister was Grace Kelly. So he was he was married to Grace Kelly's sister, and uh, unfortunately I that horse might be Red Pants, which was a steak horse. <laughs> And obviously I'm in the winner's circle. Yay, ting! That's it. End of deal. Girl, good girl. <laughs>